They say that vermin can only exist at night, and when the eyes of day have faded, they creep out of their holes and run the world until the dawn breaks. He's one of them. Jimmy Squallow. A two-bit hood with a one-bit brain just like every other rat I've known. Jimmy's a big subscriber to the old story about the mouse that scared the elephant. I'm here to set him straight. The story began with a woman like these stories always do. She said her name was Brooke and that she was looking for a brother, a farm kid gone wrong in the big city. One look at his picture and I knew she was lying. But empty wallets and empty stomachs have a way of seeing past the obvious. She told me her brother had fallen in with a bad crowd. In this town, that meant Jimmy Squallow. It wasn't too hard to find the kid once I got to the knick-knack club. He was getting an earful from Squallow, and from the looks of things, they weren't talking China patterns. I didn't go to the club to start a fight that night, but you know what they say. It's all fun and games until someone loses an eye. It was just after midnight when Brooke and her brother were reunited. I figured my role in whatever scheme they were hatching up was done. I should have known better. From what I hear, the kid was dead before I made it back to my office. Too bad Squallow's goons were just as quick. I woke up just in time to get beaten down. Squallow's thug, a fist with a neck named Mason, worked me over while the King Rat himself watched from the side. Where's the girl, elephant? Seems the kid had made off with a piece of Squallow's action. Now he was dead and the money gone. I convinced Squallow I could find the girl, get his money back. Now I just had to make myself believe it. Rook had already checked out when I called, but bellhops in this town were as crooked as a killer's smile. One C-note later, and I had her on the phone. We met downtown next to the old stag statue. I told her I knew about the money and would go to the cops if I didn't get a cut. She told me about her father, a decent man ruined by Squallow and her plan for revenge. Seduce the low man on the totem pole, get him to do your dirty work at least until he freezes. I'd heard it a dozen times before. And still, I believed her. Something in her eyes told me to help her run, to get away from this city and all the squallow in it. I was ready to do it until... I still don't know how I made it to that hospital. Everything was a blur save for one thing. Brooke was dead, and Squallow'd used me to do it. That night I dreamed of the stag statue, mocking my failure, as deer are prone to do. I knew I had to act. That was two weeks ago tonight. They say the sins we commit in life come back to haunt us once we're gone, that we're running a tab on our souls and our eternal peace depends on paying that check. People like Squallow surround themselves with wealth, looking to buy their way in without consequences, without ever looking back. Jimmy Squallow might have forgotten what he did, but that's all right. See, that's the thing about people like me. We never forget. <laughs>